Not long ago, I did have a video covering this topic of how to use outboard compressor in dual mono mode to process vocals, and I used my Pro VLA2 to demonstrate that. But unfortunately, the material that I used uh, for that demonstration, it had copyright notice, and I couldn't be bothered chasing it up. I thought the material was non-copyrighted. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. Can't be bothered. So all of the monetization was going to this person who actually raised the notification. So for that reason, I actually taken down that video. So today's video, I'm going to do the same demonstration, except instead of using my Pro VLA 2, I'm going to use another compressor, which is my DOD, dual channel compressor. But the wiring and the demonstration is pretty much the same. For this vocal chain processing to work, the stereo compressor that you might have must have an option, a button, to select dual mono mode. This way, the two independent left and the right channels become as independent channel 1 and channel 2. Normally, stereo compressors work in conjunction with each other, but having in dual mono mode, they are completely independent compressors. Not every stereo compressor has this option. In this demonstration, I'm also going to use the Behringer's Firepower FCA 1616 as my audio interface, as you'd have seen uh, right there at the bottom. I've got a whole lot of topics covered about the FCA 1616, if you want to have a quick look to the playlist in the description as well. And here, looking at the back of the units, at the top is my audio interface, and at the bottom is my ART Pro VLA. But, of course, the connections would be very similar. The first thing we need to do is we're going to connect the output 5. I'm just choosing 5. Of course, you can use any other available output, other than the main output, which is 1 and 2, because those go to your speakers. So I could use 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. I just chose 5. And we're going to use a TRS cable from the output 5 to the input of channel 1. And then we're going to use another TRS cable. And this time we're going to connect the output of channel 1 into the input of channel 2. And then finally, the output of channel 2, we're going to fit into the input 5 of our audio interface. Again, you can choose any of the available inputs but having the same number, making it, it will make it really easy when you are working in your DAW, selecting your external gear connections. Here I have project loaded in Cakewalk by BandLab. And what we're seeing here is the vocal track. And that's what we're going to uh, uh, use for this demonstration. And you should be able to see in the top uh, right-hand corner the units as well as I use them uh, to process uh, the, uh, the vocal. On this vocal, there are no plugins or there's no pro channel. Nothing is added. It's as raw as you can get. So let's have a quick uh, listen in context. Okay, let's uh, solo the vocal. I need a new promise, brand new hope. One good reason that's solid, not smoke. So we're going to process that. Of course, we can add plugins and use, uh, you know, um, compressors within the DAW. But I personally prefer to use AppWord gear for my critical tracks, like vocals, sometimes the drum bus and sometimes the guitar. Some people will argue, but this is a personal thing. I think having a discrete components, like outboard compressors um, to, to use, is different, and I believe a little bit better than algorithms that you can get in digital world. Though digital world comes very close, but personally, again, it's my personal choice, I like to use outboard gear. And I hope that this is the reason why you're here to understand how to use AppBoard gears in your project. So in Cakewalk by BandLab, it's a, a very easy to send the channel signal out into your 
audio interfaces output and then listen back to the return and you can now have access to the outboard gear. Okay, let's add the plugin that allows us to access the outside world. Just click on effects and insert external insert. And this is the screen that we are looking at. Here on the left hand side is the send and the return is on the right hand side. So let's select the send and this all depends on your connection settings that I've just shown earlier depending which output you connected your output gear and which input you connected. The next thing we need to do we need to find out the latency settings. The latency is the time that it takes for a signal to go out of your audio interface into your outboard gear and, and return back. This is important so that your DAW and Cakewalk in this instance can calculate the difference and compensate for that. And to do that, all we got to do is we need to click this uh, button right here, which will send a signal out and then into your outboard gear and back again and listen to that signal and calculate the latency. Here we are. We've got 12 milliseconds of latency and 551 samples. Let's do that again and you can watch the screen. And we are now set, ready to go. So let's start playing and see the signal. Actually, I should leave that open. And see the signal go out and come back. Of course, the compressor has no setting at the moment. Uh, so we're not, and we're going to play around with that later on and adjust it. But we should be able to see the signal on the screen. I need a new promise, brand new hope. One good reason that's solid, not smoke. A valid idea, more exuberant than dream. This is really great. We have great signal going out and signal coming back. Within this plugin, you can adjust the send level and the return level, as well as the phase switch as well. So if your signal for some reason is phase invert, you can invert that as well, so that you don't have any signal out of phase. So we can close this now. We are ready to work. The way I like to set my outboard compressor, channel one and channel two, is I like to use channel one to capture the peaks and channel 2 to level everything out and smooth things out. So for this one, channel 1, I would probably want to put in um, you know, a very high ratio about there to start with and very fast attack because I want to capture every single um, fast transient and the fast release as well because I want to release it as quick as I can because uh, I just want to capture just those peaks. And we can play around with the um, those settings if need be later on. And for this unit, I do have input gain, which I'm not going to use at this stage, and also output makeup gain there as well. It also has um, gate, which is at the moment turned off. And for these purposes, I don't really use gate, because I don't want to lose any sound as I'm processing it. And all we're going to do is work with the threshold and adjust it and see maybe about minus 3 dB of gain reduction on the peaks. So let's get uh, started. I'm just going to press play. I need a new promise, brand new hope. One good reason that's solid, not smoke. A valid idea. More exuberant than dream. That's extreme. Tangible connection with a sentient being. But lies have modified me to a point I've never seen. I'm looking for a purity. Instinct, please. For the world is not what I thought it would be. Oh no, it's really quite different. And I don't think the things that I know now. 
will count for much tomorrow. Won't count for much tomorrow if wisdom comes That's my with boss. age. Well, I must be growing senseless. For the more I learn, the less I know. It seems this game is endless. This is great. Now, as you can see, it's always a good idea to keep bypassing the compressor to make sure that your input and output are on the same level. You're not increasing any volume. All you're doing is actually compressing the audio, compressing the dynamics. So now I think I've got just about right for my first channel and let's work on my second channel where here I want to have much more reasonable uh, 4 to 1 or 5 to 1 ratio and then this time I want slow attack as well because I've got all my first pass trans transients uh, already captured. I don't want to lose any more. I'm just trying to capture the sort of uh, most of the uh, the remaining peaks and releasing it. I'm just going to release it very slowly, just so that it gives nice smooth output. Again, let's uh, give it a try and work with the threshold. We can adjust those as I see fit. I need a new promise, brand new hope. One good reason that's solid, not smoke. A valid idea, more exuberant than dream. Here I'm looking probably about minus 10 dB of uh, peak gain reductions and average about minus 6. points I've never seen. I'm looking for purity, instinct, please. For the world is not what I thought it would be. Oh no, it's really quite different. Yeah, it's bypass it. And I don't think the things that I know now will count for much tomorrow. Making sure that we don't have any change in uh, volume. Won't count for much tomorrow if wisdom comes with age well i must be let's bypass the compressor senseless. for the more i learn the less i know it's no compression it seems this game is endless compression on well i look to god he smiles at me directs me towards a mountain he says your brother and I will be waiting for you at the top. Okay, so that's how you can keep adjusting until you get the right tone and what then the right characteristic of the vocal or any other instrument that you are compressing using an outboard gear. So let's have a listen in context as well. Bypass. Back on. And there we go. I hope this demonstration was uh, useful and helpful. Now you know how you can use an outboard gear with your audio interface. Of course, your audio interface has to have more than stereo output it's got to have at least you know uh, four outputs uh, to be able to use in this way and you can use outboard compressors in your project 
in this example cake walk by band lab but you can also do this in pro tools you can also do in cubase um, in studio one and and samplitude and many other daws but not every daw supports external inserts so if it was helpful make sure you give me the thumbs up and as always thanks for watching and have a great time making music cheerio guys